So now we know everything about uh, what a compact set is, it means, and now we can look on the continuous functions on this compact set and try to find conditions on subsets uh, which guarantee this denseness. Huh? So I should tell you what do I mean with unital subalgebra and in particular what do I mean which uh, s separates the points. Okay, so I mean the setting we have so K, we, we, we consider now K a compact uh, set in maybe a very general topological setting. Huh? So let K be a compact set. And then we consider C of K, uh, and we know this is a Banach space, so C of K. Um, these are functions from, from our set K uh, to R. And so I consider now the, the real valued situation. Huh? Later I will also, at the end, I will also give a, 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 yeah, a version in a compact case, but for the proof it's better to work with, with the real valued version. Uh, okay, so I consider functions from my set K to the real numbers, which are continuous. And we know what continuous means in the most general setting. Huh? I mean, if you like, you can think of k as the interval 0 to 1 or as, as a compact uh, set in a metric space or, I mean, it, it could also be a, a very general uh, uh, topological space which is contact. And continuity, uh, we know how to, to define this, characterize this in terms of open sets. Huh? So this is defined in a topological space. And R, of course, has, has, to, uh, has its usually usual topology. Okay, and so this set is a Banach space if we uh, look on the subnorm. Huh? So this guy is equipped with the subnorm uh, so this means if I have a function then the subnorm maybe I call it f infinity uh, so this is the sub of the absolute values of f of t if t is running over my compact set k. Uh, Okay, and as for in the usual setting, interval 0, 1 or so, I mean a continuous function on a compact set always attains its, 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 its uh, supremum. Huh? So the su supremum is actually a maximum. Uh? And this means, of course, that if I have a continuous function on a compact set, then it is bounded. Uh? So this quantity is automatically less than infinity. Good, okay, and can prove it's, it's a Banach space. I mean, we have seen, we have checked this for the interval 0 to 1, but it works in the same way for any compact uh, set. Good, but now I'm looking on subsets. Uh, so I'm looking here on guys which are, which form a unital subalgebra. So a subset of C of K. Uh, so I say this is a subalgebra and more precisely a unital subalgebra. Yeah, if it have, if it is closed under a couple of operations, huh? and so of course I mean C of K is a Banach space, so it has an addition, uh, but actually it's even more, namely it's an algebra. I cannot only add functions, but I can also multiply them. Uh, up to now we have not really considered this, but here of course it is becoming important that I have this structure. Huh? So I mean the continuous functions, I mean functions I can, functions which go to R, I can very canonically I can multiply them. Uh, so I should use this structure. Uh, and the subalgebra, algebra refers to this, uh, namely that it is closed, not only under the additive structure, but also under the mu multiplication. Uh, so this here means that first, okay, first the unital means that the constant function one uh, is in my set. Uh, so the unital means that if the constant function 1, uh, that's the function which maps everything to 1, so this should be in my set A and then it should also be a subalgebra, which means that if I have two elements in A uh, and I have real numbers alpha and beta, uh, then I can take combinations, of course first I can take the vector combinations, the vector space structure, so I take the linear combination of f and g, so I take alpha f plus plus beta g, 
So this should be an A, but then uh, this, this would just be a, a sub-vector space. No? Okay. But here I really ask that it's an algebra, so also the product f times g should also be an A. No? So C of k is is a unital algebra, uh, so if I mu multiply two continuous functions, uh, I get again a continuous function. Uh, okay, so uh, that's okay. Good, okay, so that's my requirement of the set A, uh, so it should be closed under the algebraic operations, addition and multiplication, which I have at hand. Good, but then of course I need something more, because I mean they are very small, unital subalgebras, uh, and of course the one which I have uh, should be somehow big. Huh? If it is dense, it should be big, but this big is guaranteed by something which looks very innocent, namely that it allows me uh, to separate points. Uh, so I should have enough functions so that I can distinguish points, two points. For any, for any pair of points, I should be able uh, to distinguish them. Uh, and so that's the part two here of this definition. So I say A, this subset of the continuous functions on K, this separates points, separates points um, of K. So if, whenever I have two points which are different, so for any two points, let's say S and T in K, uh, such that S is not the same as T, I should find a function uh, which has different values at those two points. Uh, so there should be at least one function in my set A such that the value of F at the point S is not the same as the value at the point T. Uh, so in this sense, I mean this function really can distinguish between the point S and T. Good, so and, and that's yeah, that's all what I require here. Huh? I want a, a unital subalgebra which respects these algebraic uh, operations and it should at least separate uh, any two points uh, from each other. Okay, and maybe one should think a little bit that of course uh, maybe uh, asking that the constant function 1 is in A of course means more general that I'm asking that any constant function is in A. Huh? Because, I mean, if I have something in A, I can multiply it with a real number, so out of the constant function 1, I can make the constant function alpha. Huh? Okay, so this means all uh, constant functions are actually in A. Huh? Okay, but of course constant functions do not separate points, huh? so I need something more. Huh? Okay, and then, of course, uh, yeah, if one wants to go back to the classical theorem of Weierstrass, then of course one should check that the polynomial satisfies these conditions. But this is, this is trivially true. Huh? I mean, uh, if I multiply or uh, add polynomials, I get other polynomials. Of course, I also have the constant polynomial, uh, and polynomials are separating points. Huh? So, I mean, if I have two, two points, uh, let's, uh, let's say on R or in 0, 1, let's say in 0, 1. Uh, so if I have two points, two different points, then I find, of course, a polynomial which takes on arbitrary values at those two points. Uh, so I can choose different values at those points. Uh, so there are many polynomials which allow me to, de to, to separate the points. Good, okay, so that's uh, encouraging. Uh, so that's really properties which the polynomials have, but it, it, it looks like we are not really using much of the polynomials. Huh? We, we use very few uh, properties. Huh? That, that's the amazing thing here. Huh? So polynomials is, is much an overkill. Huh? So it's really, it's a, it's a unital subalgebra which separates the points. And yeah, that's what we have to prove here. And maybe uh, we will prove it in maybe a little bit a different form. So namely here we are saying that something is dense in C of K if it has some properties. And of course, if I go to the closure, then the closure, it, it's the same as saying the closure is all of C of K. So in instead of talking something which is dense, I want to talk about something which is equal. And so in addition to the properties which I have here, I should also have it's closed. Uh, so I mean, uh, so this is equivalent. And that's how we are proving it. Uh, so to saying that if I have a unital subalgebra and it separates points, A separates points 
then by this it should be dense, but then if I know it is closed, then it must be everything. Uh, so if in addition I also assume that A is closed, then this tells me that A is already all of the continuous functions on my compact interval. Uh, okay, uh, and I mean that's how we're going to prove it. Uh, I mean if, if you want this, then instead of saying A is dense, you are showing that the closure of A uh, is everything, uh, and then I mean you are in, in this setting, because then you have an A which still has these properties, but now in addition is also closed. Uh, okay, so that, that's uh, what, what we want to prove.